This is our third session on 1 Thessalonians 2, 5 to 8, and I just want to address one thing briefly, namely, this word, we, referring to apostles. And the we, throughout this letter, of course, refers to the very first verse of the book, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father, and the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. In other words, Paul has included Silvanus and Timothy as writers, and he here includes them as apostles. We, in our ministry to you in Thessalonica, when we came and preached to you, could have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we didn't. And all I want to do is ask, so what is an apostle? Who are the apostles if you can include the likes of Silvanus or Silas, another name, and Timothy? Father, I pray that you would give guidance now, because we realize the apostolic authority was unique in the early church, and the apostles and prophets were the foundation of the church, not just every preacher, and so we need wisdom how to understand the foundations of our faith in the apostolic writings. I pray for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. We never came with words of flattery, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed. God is witness neither seeking glory from people, whether from you or from others, for though we could have made demands as apostles of Christ, we didn't. So, what is an apostle? Let's go back to the very beginning and watch Jesus bring this body into being, this body of people. Here's Luke 6. In these days, he, Jesus, went out to the mountain to pray. And all night he continued in prayer to God. That's how he got ready to choose the apostles. And when day came, he called his disciples, now that's a broad generic word for those who follow Jesus, and he chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles. So the apostles are those who are chosen out from disciples and given unique authority. They are the ones who are closest to Jesus. They will follow with him all the way through and be witnesses of the resurrection. He gives them authority over demons and to preach the gospel, and they become a unique band of of people so that when Judas, remember, apostatized, that is, he betrayed Jesus, they chose one other person to complete the number 12. So there was a symbolic significance, perhaps 12 tribes of Israel, and one apostle representing each one symbolically as the new uh, people of God, the new Israel. Now, Paul comes later, and he says, for example, in in Galatians 1.1, Paul, an apostle, I'm just including the Greek here so that if you want to, you can see that the same word is used each time. Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So Paul is laying claim to be um, another apostle, not one of the twelve, but not one who made himself an apostle, and not one who men made an apostle, but the Lord Jesus made him an apostle. So this is a very, very high claim that Christ had set him apart from his mother's womb, and now on the Damascus Road, he lays claim on him, and he makes him one of his authoritative apostles. One of the criterion that Paul met He says, am I not free? This is 
1 Corinthians 9, 1, am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? When Paul was granted the sight of the glory of Christ on the Damascus Road, Jesus was setting him apart not only by commissioning him as an apostle, but by granting him to see the risen Christ. And the twelve had the criterion that they had to have borne witness to the resurrection. So Paul is claiming to be on a par with the original twelve. Nevertheless, the word apostle is just an ordinary word for one who is sent. And so there can be some confusion. Here in 2 Corinthians 8, it says, As for Titus, he's my partner, my fellow worker, and you're for your benefit. And as for our brothers, they are usually translated messengers, which is appropriate, but it's the same word. They are apostles of the churches to the glory of Christ. In other words, this word apostles is not unique in its application to the twelve. It can apply to churches who send messengers, just ordinary messengers. Here it is again in Philippians 2.25. I have thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your, translated messenger usually, your apostle to minister to my need. So the the church at Philippi had simply chosen one of their number, namely Epaphroditus, and made him a, a messenger to send some things to Paul while he's in prison in Rome. So don't base the uniqueness of the select group of apostles merely on the word apostle because the word apostle is broad. Here it has a kind of middle meaning, I think, between the complete authority of those who have been set aside by the Lord and the average use of it. Here's Barnabas included, Acts 14. When the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd. So there's a reference to apostles referring to Barnabas and Paul. Now, that's probably more than just the average messenger meaning, because it's linked with Paul, who is one of the authoritative, set apart by Christ, given a vision of the resurrection authority. So, my conclusion is that when Paul here includes Silvanus and Timothy, we, when we came and preached to you, could have made demands as apostles. What he was doing is saying, I am the main apostle. I have seen the Lord Christ. Christ has commissioned me directly. I wasn't chosen uh, the way I chose Timothy. Remember back in Derby, Paul just found Timothy and said, I want you to be a partner with me. And so I think he's listing Silvanus and Timothy here as co-apostles who have their authority indirectly as associates of Paul, the main apostle, in the same way that he calls them authors of this letter, Paul, Silvanus, Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, we are together writing to you, even though several times in the letter it becomes very clear that Paul's the writer. Since we were torn away from you, brothers, in Thessalonica, for a short time in person, not in heart, we endeavored the more eagerly and with great desire to see you face to face because we wanted to come to you. I, Paul, again and again, but Satan hindered us. So Paul intrudes himself here to make it very personal. I am the one writing this letter. And I think the same basically applies here when he says, we could have made demands. He means, I am the one who has the apostolic authority. And insofar as they are close associates of mine, they share in that authority. And we did not wield power in that way.